Hello and welcome to this Astranti YouTube video. In this video I'm going to be talking through capital asset replacement and if you like this and you want to see more then please do hit the like button at the bottom of the screen and subscribe to the Astranti YouTube channel. Visit the website at www.astranti.com and capital asset replacement is going to be the subject of this video and we're going to be posting several videos over the course of the next few months. So again, if you'd like to see more of those, please make sure you subscribe. And this is one of those topics that's really important to the P2 syllabus and very important to you as a management accountant because it's the kind of thing that you might actually be doing in your daily life as a qualified accountant. And this is all about replacing assets and finding the most appropriate time to replace them. And this is perfectly normal for a business. Businesses will have to replace computers. Businesses will have to replace machines. They might even have to replace the buildings, the shops, the factories themselves. And capital asset replacement is all about finding out when you replace them and what is the absolute optimal time in which to replace them. And the best way to look at that is to look at exclusive products. So products that are different from each other and ones that have different lifespans, but they also fulfill the same role within the organization. So choosing between two different options and which one is the most appropriate. So I'll give you an example. Let's say that we have two factories for an organization and one factory needs replacing or refurbishing every five years and the other every 10 years. Now, we can't just say that this one is clearly the better one because it only needs replacing every 10 years or needs refurbishing every 10 years because it could be that the annual cost is far higher. So actually that has an impact on whether it is the most value over the course of its lifespan. So what we do here is we look for the lowest common multiple and then we compare them over their lifespans. So I'll give you another example now, and this is about two ovens for a company. It could be a company that's a restaurant, or it could be a company that produces bakery goods. And let's say that they have a different cost, a different lifespan and different running costs. So you can see we've got the, the bake it, on the left hand side and we've got the hot bake on the right hand side. And we also have different residual values for each of the particular ovens. And the cost of the bake kit, the initial purchase cost is one million pounds. It will last for four years and has running costs of 80,000 pounds per annum and it has no residual value. It will have to be completely scrapped for no value. Then turning to the hot bake, this one only costs 600,000. So we're making a 400,000 pounds saving on the initial purchase price. So again, looks initially like the hot bake is the cheaper one, but this time it only lasts for three years and it actually has running costs of 120,000 per annum. And like the bake it, it has no residual value. And the cost of capital at this organization, which is important for these sorts of calculations, so always bear that in mind, is 7%. But we can't initially just compare them right off the bat because they have different values. They've got different costs. They've got different lives, different running costs as well. So we have to compare them side by side using the lowest common multiple. So what is the lowest common multiple between four years and three years. Well, simple mathematics should tell you that the lowest common multiple between these two years is 12. So what we have to do now is we have to scale the entire calculation, the entire analysis over a course of over a period of 12 years. And then we can find the cheapest one over 12 years. So let's compare them side by side now. We've got our years running from zero to 12. We've got the action, because remember that there will not just be running costs every year, there will be a repurchase cost 
every few years. So every four years for the bake it and every three years for the hot bake. And then we have the running costs each year during the or in between the different periods. So we have to then put in our cash flows. We've got our one million pounds purchase price every four years and 600,000 every three years for the hot bake oven. And we fill in our annual running costs. So of course, remember that this is a calculation that requires the use of discount factors. So we need to look at the cost of capital for 7% to determine the appropriate discount factor. So let's take a look at the discount factors now. We've got the periods here from one to 12 and we've got the discount factors at 7% for each of these. So for example, in year one, there will be a discount factor of 0 0.935 applied. In period two, there'll be a discount factor of 0 0.873 applied and so on. So we can install those numbers into our calculation. I'll go right down to the 12th period, which is 0 0.44, as you can see on the bottom of your screen. We do that for both of the ovens. And now we can calculate the present value, the present cost of each action. So for example, with the hot, oh sorry, the bake it, year zero, we've got cash flow of one million, and we've got a discount factor of one because it's year zero. So the present cost, the present value of that particular action is one million pounds. Then for the first year, 80,000 in cash flow multiplied by the 0 0.935 discount factor provides a present value cost of 74,800 pounds. So repeat the process for each particular action, each particular cash flow and discount factor and do that for both ovens. And now we've got the total costs over the 12 years. And now we can calculate the total cost, the total cost to the organization over a 12 year period of choosing one particular oven over the other. And so we simply calculate this cost by adding together all these different costs here, as you can see denoted by the arrow on the right hand side of your screen. And that provides us with a total cost for the hot bake oven of £2,768,640 and for the bake it £2,980,360. So actually we can see here that the hot bake is the cheapest. So even though it's got far higher running costs per year and lasts longer, over the course of 12 periods, it will be cheaper than using the Bake It oven. This is the kind of decision that you as a management accountant will have to make. But there are some problems with this type of analysis. And one of them is that it doesn't account for tax and inflation. Perhaps we're getting tax discounts on our asset purchases, and that will of course lead to a higher nominal tax deduction for the more expensive oven. It doesn't take into account inflation either. We're assuming that money is going to be worth the same in 12 years time as it is now, which of course it isn't. It also assumes like for like replacements, that we will always replace that hot bake with another version of that hot bake in three years time and the cost is going to be identical. There's not gonna be any variations. They're not gonna improve the hot bake oven over the course of three years. The suppliers aren't going to improve it, which again is unlikely. They're more than likely going to have to do adjustments and improvements on the oven at the manufacturer over that course of 12 years. It also assumes the expected life. It assumes that it will always last for three years, always last for four years, whatever it may be. Whereas in real life, there are chances that something will still be working pretty well, so we'll just use it for another year, or that something breaks down within a year when it was supposed to last three, four, five years. So again, it assumes that expected life will always be fulfilled. But, Apart from those issues, it is a very good way of assessing over a period of time which particular asset is the best one to uh, 
use within your organization, which one is going to cost you the least over a period of time. If we just looked at the initial costs and the initial running costs, etc., we may not have foreseen which one was going to be the cheapest. We could have looked at that and think, well, the hot bake is cheaper to buy, so let's go for that. But then someone else might say, well, the bake it costs less on a yearly basis and it lasts for longer, so let's go for that. But it's only by looking at each oven over a period of 12 years using this lowest common multiple were we able to identify that the hot bake oven is definitely the cheapest over an equal period of time. So thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you have enjoyed it. I hope you have found it useful. If you would like to see more of these sorts of topics videos, again, this is very important for those of you, particularly those of you studying P2 and the management case study exam, but it is also important for everyone because this is the kind of thing that you will be doing as a management accountant. And so if you would like to see more of these, please like the video, subscribe at the bottom of the screen or visit the website www.astranti.com.